Okay, I think we'll start. <coughs> Professor Patak has gone to Berkeley uh, yesterday night. So this session and next session I will be taking myself. So Firuza has written <coughs> what is the convention for Moodle submissions. Because last time I told you that many people had not written their roll number and names. <coughs> Neither on the sheet itself is neither here nor here. So we just got a lot of files. We couldn't make out from whom they are. And since there was a common model till last time, some of them had come from civil engineering students. So we couldn't sort them out. When you had submitted <coughs> paper printouts, we got about 90 of them. But from the soft copies, we could not do download and print only 60, the exercise which we did last time. That means some people had printed out and submitted, but not submitted the soft copy. So whoever they are, please submit the soft copy also, so it will remain on our record. Because we only have the hard copies and not the soft copies. So what we did is, we ourselves went through all 90 submissions, marked all the errors and the averages that each submission has, as found by us is 20 errors and average found by you last time, that is when four, you checked it in groups of 4 is 12. That means you have been able to find about 60 percent of the expected error. And if we draw a scatter plot, this instructor and this student, if their errors are equal, then you will get points lying along a straight line. This is your 60 percent line, this is 100 percent. So the points are like this, they are around the 60 percent line. <coughs> some of them have actually reached 100 percent, some corrections are very good and some are of course below 60 percent. <coughs> so we can realize that even after checking by four people, <coughs> including the person who has written himself still is difficult to find errors and in fact the procedure is <coughs> that after these corrections, you have to make these corrections on the soft copies, print out and again check and to our surprise we will find that you will find errors which you had missed previously. You cannot find all the errors in one pass, especially there are too many of them. So this exercise has to be repeated multiple times still you are not able to find any error. Now what we have done is for each of the corrected submissions we have marked some errors in pencil and these are marked by me then I gave this whole bunch to Firuza whether she can make out which kind of error it is without telling her. She has been able to make out most of them. So she will be showing you the errors in each shade. We are not displaying the name necessarily. So these are anonymous, but they all belong to you. So you will find all kinds of errors because you individually might have made only one or two kinds of errors, but others might have made other kinds of errors. You will realize what kinds of errors occur. If we had just given you a list of types of errors, <coughs> you wouldn't have believed. But now you will see concrete examples from your own submissions that will help you to understand the errors. So this is the transpose. So E X A P instead of that it should be E X P A N D I N G. The next error over here is I N G restructure. So when you are already writing in present tense like however the toxics 
successful in impressing upon. So, impressing, so why you have to write restructure? So, that is why you have to write restructuring. So, this is one kind of error. So, over here the error is abbreviation. The idea which is presented here seems to be correct since maximizing the number. So, you should spell it out N U M B R and you should avoid using an abbreviation. So, and first of all there is a full stop over here and in normally a sentence when you write number people may generally think of as no, no of the possibilities which is very different. Over here instead of emphatic it should be emphat. Another thing, this is another form of abbreviation, ampersand. Instead of and, you should actually spell out A and D. We gave an excellent example for this based on some research being conducted. So, over here the tense is proper. Uh, in pe normally people would have written she has given or something so which is proper. So, that is why we have marked it out. The solution reached in this talk is to allow people doing creative work. Doing is not required because creative work actually means that he is doing something. So, it is not necessary to write doing. Themselves should be one word. So, that is why you join them with this symbol. Over here, but a sentence cannot begin with but and. These are conjunctions that means they should come between two words. They cannot come at the start of a The other is scenario. Scenario means a future scene. So, uh, normally when you write, I believe the speaker does not take into consideration the context and scenario. He cannot take into consideration the scenario. S instead of scenario, it is the situation because scenario is a scene which will, uh, which is going to come. So, you cannot predict any.
Two things are yeah, yeah. If you see academic writing, you won't find. If it is to be published in some prestigious journal, you won't find the word scenario. But you want to achieve academic language then you can come down and write in text messages. You can't go upwards, you can always come downwards. You have to first know what the benchmark is, then you can break the benchmark for some specific purpose. If it is a quotation that somebody said this, these are called as quotation marks and they have to come in pairs like parenthesis we discussed. But if you want to emphasize something or if it is a title <coughs> which you want to quote, or some word you want to emphasize, then it should come in inverted commas. What? Sentence should say that so and so said, etc. It has to indicate how how can a quotation come in center of the sentence? The other sentence is not at the same level of meaning. No? It has to say somebody said comma then into quotation marks. See many people use these quotation marks instead of this. Sometimes the word processor does not allow you, but that is no excuse. <coughs> a quotation is a quotation. It is what somebody said or somebody wrote. Because you are indenting, you are getting away from your this thing and now you are going there. That is what somebody said, that is quotation. You can have a sentence where in and to are separate. Generally, they will be together because into is one word. 
but on to is not one word. Many people combine on to together, it is not one word. See fast <coughs> is an adjective like fast speed and fast is also an adverb, there is no such thing as fastly to make it adverb. Yeah, here it says first experiment then another experiment means second experiment. Now you can, can't go on using another, another, you have to spell it out as second, third, etc. If it is more than two, if it, if there are only two you can say another. So in the third para, it should say the third experiment. This I think we have discussed, yeah, yeah, using all caps amounts to shouting. So you should not use all caps unless the title calls for it, you should use caps and small. See, afraid is not a verb, it needs an auxiliary verb before that. You can't say, I am not afraiding you. You have to say, I am not afraid of you. So, afraid is not a verb. See every sentence <coughs> must have a verb, that is the definition of sentence. <coughs> if a group of words does not have a verb, then it can form a clause or phrase, but not a sentence. Every sentence must have a verb, here that verb is, is required. Sometimes verb is, is hidden, then the sentence construction should, here it is not hidden because he wanted to hide it, he has missed it out. You should not miss it out, you can hide it, uh, what you are saying is right and there are many languages which do not require verb, like Sanskrit does not require verb most of the time, Russian does not require verb, but English always requires a verb. Unless your construction is such that the verb is understood. But here this is his opening sentence, so you can't know what he wants to say.
of his past life. So you will find, can I rub this out, have you noted this down, that this should be the file format, people who came late, please note this down because any future submission has to follow this format. So we can see that there are two types of errors. First is of course errors of grammar or grammatical errors. And second where you are having disputes. or what are called errors of style. <coughs> so roughly to separate out, if you read out a paragraph and while listening to that you can make out the error, then it is a grammatical error. If you cannot make out in the spoken form, but when it is written you can make it out, then it is an error of style. So style refers to the conventions used while writing the language. In speech many of these things are permitted because the brain corrects for them, but once you put it down on paper, grammatical errors are of course not allowed, but errors of style are also not allowed. So when you are speaking out and you are quoting, from your intonation people know that this is a quotation or this is a title, because you do not put inverted commas while speaking. Many of these symbols which you use are unspeakable. But while writing, we have to use these conventions because we do not have other means like intonation, <coughs> rise and fall of voice <coughs> or pause which we can use in speech. So that is done by punctuation and all these other things. So once somebody reads this, he should get the same experience as if he were listening live. So we have to put enough clues for the reader, so that the reader can make out your meaning. So this style is a technical word, it refers to the agreed patterns of writing. Style is the format used for writing and publishing. So if you want to improve your grammar and improve your style, we will suggest you one book each. The first is Ren and Martin's <coughs> High School English Grammar and Composition. This is meant as a, it is an old book, it was published in 1937 first and it is still available in the current edition. How many of you have heard of this book? Was it a uh, recommended book in your school? So those who have missed out, because in many vernacular <coughs> language schools, they do not necessarily follow this, they only follow the government curriculum. So those of you who have missed out and who might be making grammatical errors, it is worth getting this book and just going through, it is only a school level book, but it has both grammar and composition. That means how to write is also given in that. There are many things, there are things about poetry, meters. So in a small book, you get all kinds of information. And if you can follow this and do the exercises, there is also a companion volume, which is called a key to this. So if you can go through this book, those who have missed out or even those who have gone through, they can again go through because now <coughs> after studying this, you might get new insight into what the book is trying to tell you and it will polish your old knowledge. So 
So this is regarding grammar. What is style? About style hardly anybody knows. So the most famous book is one which Professor Patek referred to, that is Chicago Manual of Style. This is the book, this is the 16th edition. It was first published almost 100 years ago <coughs> by Chicago University Press. It's called, it is called the Chicago Manual, even if you search for Chicago Manual, you will get only this book. It's called the Chicago Manual of Style, of style. His style. So, Chicago University Press used to publish lot of books, like many of the Western universities do. And for their internal arrangement, they needed some kind of a manual, which would list all the conventions used by them, so that all books would have a similar look and similar format. So, they combined their notes and published a manual for internal use. But when it, other people came to know, it became so popular that they were asked to publish it as a book. So they started publishing as a book and most of the other universities started following this. Even the publishers follow this. And this is 16th edition. So you can imagine how many times it has been published. Every time the editor will board has changed. What I had was the 12th edition, which I had 12, year, 12 years ago. That didn't contain electronic publishing. But now this one takes care of electronic media, word processing, etc. All those things are also listed out in this. So for a campus like us, suppose we have 5,000 students and 500 faculty members. How many copies of this should be there for people to refer because everybody is supposed to write. What's your guess? Our search shows that there is only one copy of this in the central library and it has been issued, somebody will return it on 24th March. While if you read this or its web information, you will find that it is not only published in paper form, it is also published in electronic form and you can subscribe to that. So there is an institutional subscription where anybody in the institute can log in and can have access to this manual. That means abroad, most of the universities have this subscription, like you have subscription to Athena and other databases and magazines, and their faculty and students use it online. So this is an extensive manual you can see, and it is written like a law book that there are clause numbers and you can exactly refer that as per this clause, this thing should be done, that there is no dispute. Even the Germans have a similar set of books called the Duden. Any, anybody has learned German here? So Duden is the name of a publisher who has published a set of books including dictionary, style manual, etc. And any <coughs> worthwhile academic, etc. will have this set of books in his collection. And if there is a dispute, they will immediately take out the book and sort it out. They are so particular about their language that if somebody uses incorrect language, <coughs> they have an expression which translated means don't murder the language. They are so particular. <coughs> you find any advanced country, not only English speaking, but speaking any other language, are very particular about their language and very particular about their publications. So we have a lot to learn. 
if we <coughs> want to become an english <coughs> speaking and english expressing country we have to achieve that level of competence so many of the rules of comma we are condensed from this because here the whole chapter on comma is there what we made is we combined them and reduced it to one sheet of a3 size so that you could quickly refer to them everybody doesn't have access to this book this book cost <coughs> when we bought this 2 years ago it cost 1600 rupees now the dollar has gone up so it may be 2000 rupees it's not easy to afford individually this is our department copy because we use it extensively whatever we are telling you we are doing it ourselves it's not only we have collected material from somewhere and we are passing it on to you almost every day we are practicing all these things because we have a lot of documents to make lot of reports to write and every time we use all these methodologies and what you see has come from experience it's not by reading books alone that's why we showed you how it is corrected that each of your submissions has been corrected on the top there is a time written also that how many minutes it took to correct so average it has taken 3 to 5 minutes to correct one page last time you had 5 into 4 that is 20 minutes isn't it even then you could find only 60% of the error and if you see this is errors and this is time these are the actual errors you will find that even if you spend more time this is asymptotic you never tend to find all the errors while somebody who has experienced will in a finite time find almost all the errors if you have gone through the lectures which were referred to sahana murthy's lecture in that she gives an estimate that how much time it takes to read how much time it takes to read critically etc you find all those timings for novices and experts you will find that experts are five times faster <coughs> what a novice will do in one hour the expert will do in 10 minutes so actually experts are not faster because nobody can be faster than your eye and brain can work experts at are at the correct speed novices are slower because their brain doesn't respond so they are five times slower because brain takes time to understand <coughs> and as you read more and more and as you practice your time to read will come down that is an indication you can't aim for speed you might have heard about speed reading and such thing there is no such thing as speed reading you read for comprehension and as you go on comprehending your speed will automatically increase speed will be a side effect of your competence you can't aim at speed like an accelerator it's an indication that this will keep on improving like this and you will go closer and closer till you hit this line in finite time so there is this is measurable what competence we are talking about is measurable now the exercise which we did last time that is we successively corrected the manuscript by four people so the correct procedure is when you go on piling up errors on a manuscript it becomes difficult to detect error because you get distracted by the previous marking actually after each correction you have to print it out so it becomes clear. correct the errors and print it out and again go through and you will find more errors but the number of errors will go on reducing till you get a clean output it's like in a washing machine that first you will get dirty water then you will get less dirty water 
in subsequent rinsing finally you will get clear water then you stop you don't have to rinse but till you get dirty water you have to keep on washing you can't say i'll wash only once or wash only twice it depends on how much dirt is there in fact there are intelligent washing machines which actually monitor the drain drain water turbidity <coughs> and till that turbidity drops it will keep on washing so the same thing applies to written language you can't write it right the first time it's very difficult you can become accomplished but only way is through practice so we'll show you some interesting things in this this is the clause about dates how to write dates so all numerical dates and other these things etc <coughs> this style that 5/10/19 slash slash and etc should not be used in formal writing except with certain dates like 9/11 etc then it goes on telling and next is come to 9.37 that is iso that is international standard organization style for dates this is 9.37 so international organization for standardization recommends an all numerical style consisting of year month day that is from largest component to smallest this is how we write numbers that we write large numbers first followed by small numbers the year is given in full so you don't write only 14 you have to write 2014 and the month or day if one digit only is preceded by a zero so it always remains two digits thus january 19 comma 2010 appears as 2010 hyphen 01 hyphen 19 among other advantages this style allows dates to be sorted correctly in an electronic spreadsheet and other application so it is compatible for electronic processing any other kind of date you will find difficult to process as a date so do you find such date written anywhere left hand corner right from from first session the date is being written as this and this is as per iso format so it ap might appear funny to other people this is an international standard and if you are doing electronic documentation you should start using this format okay 